CloseCallSports.com. We got so many questions about this play. He's going to poke that one right to third. Espinal to Simi got one on the first and not going to get him. Unable to turn the double play, so the inning continues here for the Red Sox. It's a great job by Alex getting down the line right there. This is going to end up as a replay review. Let's listen for the hot mics if we can hear anything. The throw was not perfect by any means. You're just challenging the out at first base then, right? I'm not sure where the first baseman was standing right there. It wasn't even on the bag or close to it. He's trying to block the bag with his foot right well, there. The Red Sox are going to challenge this. They're challenging that play at first. First of all, it's Toronto's challenge, not Boston's, because the initial call was safe, and clearly Boston wants to keep the safe call. Anyway, it sounded like on the audio, Doug Eddings confirmed with Montoya that they're challenging the out call. We've talked many times about specificity of the challenge on this channel. It's a rule. We've talked about how baseball is not specific enough, even about those terms. And we've talked about everything that baseball can do better. Anyway, what we're going to see on the replay is that the fielder never touches first base and the runner never touches first base. What do you do? And if you've right there, been with us for a while and if you've seen our articles on CloseCallSports.com, you know that the runner is considered to have reached or achieved first base the moment that the runner passes first base on the overrun, whether or not the runner has actually touched first base. And because the fielder never touched first base, we don't have a valid tag. Now, the fielder definitely does touch first base inadvertently with his foot well after the fact, i.e. after the runner has passed first base. So by rule, the runner is considered safe because a force play, even though this is not a force technically in our database, it would be called a force is about timing who beat whom to the base. It's not about a tag. It's about timing because it's a foot tag of first base, not a glove tag of a runner. And as far as timing is concerned, the runner got there first. That is where it matters whether or not the fielder touches first base, but it doesn't matter whether or not the runner touches first base. In order to then declare the runner out for missing first base, the defense would need to file a valid appeal. We've talked about appeals in prior videos. We've talked about appeals relative to replay review in prior videos. So right here, no one touches anything. The Blue Jays first baseman right here, if he turns around and tells the umpire the runner missed the base or something to that effect that indicates he wants to file an appeal while tagging first base, the umpire can say, you're right, therefore, Verdugo's out. You missed first base, out for missing a base. But the Blue Jays never did that. They never filed an appeal. And then if we kept the video rolling, what we would see is that Verdugo, after overrunning first base, returns to first base and stands on it. That's called last time by, last time by. That corrects any prior base running infraction as Eddings signals the outcome of the replay review, which is 100% the correct outcome because it is about the, the quote-unquote force play, not about the missed base touch, because it requires an appeal for a missed base touch, and the Blue Jays never appealed. Anyway, last time by, we've done many videos on that and articles on that before, too. Signifies that when Verdugo, after overrunning first base, returned to first base and stood on it, that corrected the base running infraction of missing first base when he made his first pass. They should tell the That's what last time by means. The last time that you get to the base, whatever you do there, will correct prior base running infractions if they existed. Another thing that we heard was, why aren't the umpires explaining this to the crowd? And we have been talking since 2000, I think 17, about the very same question. I don't know. Someone is dropping the ball because they're continuing to drag their feet and not giving the umpires microphones to explain things to the crowd. Totally on board with that. Another question that we were asked, why isn't this obstruction on the first baseman? And if you were to call obstruction on this play, I would be okay with that. And here's the reason. The first baseman did not need to occupy the place in front of first base to receive the throw. Therefore, without possession of the ball, and the act of fielding the ball did not take the fielder into the runner's base path, I, I, I agree with that obstruction call. So if you call that... That's fine. But I understand where Toronto's frustrated, but at the same time, it's in the rule book, it's in the umpire manual, and both of these documents are available to teams. I don't know why teams don't make use of them more, because it's right in front of them. If you read the rules, it becomes a much easier play to understand. And if you've been with us for a while and you saw this play, you probably have a much easier time following along than if you don't know the rules or if this is new to you. 
And if so, I encourage you to visit us at CloseCallSports.com, subscribe to this channel, and you'll learn more about the rules as we do more videos on these weird types of plays. Visit us online at CloseCallSports.com, Twitter and Facebook at CloseCallSports. We'll see you on the site. Too long didn't read. If they file an appeal for missing a base, the runner is out because they did not file an appeal. For that reason, the runner is safe. An appeal is different from a replay review.